Now that our walls are added, we can add doors and windows simply by selecting the wall in which to place them. I select a wall, right click, and from the mouse menu, select Insert Window. This opens the Window Library browser from where to select your window. The left pane shows a folder tree of the available default window libraries. This is where understanding window library management becomes important and will be discussed in the next tutorial. The first folder, underscore project library, is specific only to the active project. There are also various manufacturer libraries, and the last one, window library, is our generic library. Opening its folder shows the different window types, and when you select a type, the right side of the browser shows the nominal sizes to select from. However, for this example, I will go into the project library. The default project library contains CLAD picture types. I will select the Win-4036 by double-clicking, at which point its specific properties are displayed. Here you can access the rough opening width, height, the material code, and the label that appears on the floor plan. I'll click OK to select this window. And now the window is automatically attached to the wall that was selected. Also notice that a contextual toolbar menu has appeared, allowing us to control our input process. By default, the cursor input location is attached to the left side of the window as viewed from the left side of the wall. You can change the reference point from the L, M, or R buttons on the contextual toolbar. Selecting M sets the reference point to the middle of the window. The header height of the window can be adjusted by clicking the Z Select Height button. Right now, this window is using a header height of 82 inches, as what was set in project parameters. The value can be changed here on a window by window basis. You can set whether the placement height is set relative to the floor or to the global Z height of the building and whether the placement height will be to the header or to the sill. Pressing OK closes the dialog. To set the horizontal location in the wall, we can set a distance from a reference point the same way we located wall points. I'll hold my cursor over a corner and press the Q key to set the relative reference point. Then slide the cursor in the direction I want to go and type in a distance. For this case, 60 inches. I can continue to add additional windows on the same wall, and then press Confirm to select another wall. To choose a different window size, Use the Edit Parameters button, the one that looks like an index card. This opens the browser to the last selected window. And this back arrow button takes us back into the last window type folder. I can continue to select another window size from within the same folder, or I can select from another window library and type. This time I'll select from the generic window library, circle type, CIR24. and Instead of double-clicking the selection, which opens up the Window Properties dialog, I can also select a window by single click, then a right mouse click to choose Add, or going back now, I can also select by holding the left mouse button down and slightly dragging, then releasing the mouse. And now that window is attached to the wall. If I locate a window on top of another window, interference is automatically recognized, and I will be prompted to either insert, replace, or cancel. I'll choose replace. Pressing the escape key will end the input function. Now I'll press Control S to save the project. Pressing the F2 key toggles into the 3D window, and the windows can also be seen and worked on within here as well. However, window layout work is most practically done within the 2D layout window.
Adding doors works exactly the same way. I'll select a wall, right click, and select Insert Door, and then the Door Browser appears. For doors, there is a project specific door library and a generic door library. Expanding the generic door library shows a number of various door types. I'll select from the exterior six panel type the 30 exterior panel door by clicking and dragging to attach the door to the wall. With doors, in addition to controlling the reference point, you can also toggle between the left and right hand swings, as well as the flip, whether it's towards the interior side of the wall or the exterior side of the wall. The 2D flip flips both the 2D presentation and the 3D model, whereas the 3D flip only flips the 3D model. I'll place the reference of this door at a distance of 6 inches from the corner of this interior finished wall line. By pressing Q to reset the reference, move to the right, then type a value of 6 inches. To place the door on another wall, I press Confirm, select the new wall. This time I want to change my door type to an interior cased opening. So I use the Edit Parameters button that looks like an index card, then scroll down to find the interior cased opening. I'll choose the 4 0 size door and locate 1 in this wall. Confirm to select another wall. And in this wall, I can line up with a previously placed door by snapping to its center. And confirm to choose another wall. Place one here, another here. And now I'll choose another door type. An interior six panel, three slash zero. Set the locating reference. Set swings and flips. Place one here and here. I press Escape to end the function. If corrections or adjustments need to be made, just select the door. The respective orientation can be toggled by clicking on these arrows. The door locations can also be moved by using its handles. To unselect the door, move the cursor away, then click. Double-clicking a door opens the respective properties dialog and allows the door to be swapped out with another. The same functionality applies to Windows. This is a good time to press Control-S to save the project.